Hey, good afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well out there at this uh, crazy coronavirus uh, situation that we're currently going through in the United States. Uh, I know that this is a trying time for many. And, um, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day and we were talking about, you know, this whole situation. And a few weeks back, I had made a post on LinkedIn uh, stating that, you know, I thought that this was just a temporary um, event, you know, with the economy and that, you know, things would bounce back pretty quickly. But seeing how the, you know, the, the, uh, the events have unfolded and that, you know, there's just a huge amount of uncertainty with this virus and how many people it's impacting and, you know, what really the turnaround time is going to be on a vaccine. You know, we're seeing anywhere from a year to 18 months on a vaccine and um it's just a trying time and you know we were talking i said you know i didn't think this was going to be as bad as it as it looks to be and i asked my wife i said when's the last time that in your lifetime and in our lifetime that they've ever shut down everything around us you know sporting events restaurants bars um you know airlines you name it. When's the last time you've gone down the toilet paper aisle and seen everything, you know, completely wiped out? I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. There's a lot of people panicking right now, a lot of uncertainty in the market. Um, we're currently witnessing history that our children and our grandchildren are going to learn about in their history books at school. Um, they're going to read about this, you know, current event. They're going to learn about what impact it's having on the economy. And it really, you know, it's really telling that, you know, we're really in uncharted waters and we're entering uncharted waters, especially for retirees. We have the Fed lowering rates to all time lows. We have bonds, you know, just com continuing to get slammed. And, you know, it's having an impact on the economy as a whole. But the people that are really, really going to have a challenge navigating this are retirees because they depend so much on the safety and security that bonds offer them in their retirement portfolio and they depend on that security for income and with interest rates being at rock bottom and it looks like they're going to be at rock bottom for their you know for a long time there has to be a better way to you know still find security obviously retirees can't be 100 percent vested in the market and you know we need to be able to provide a solution that's going to allow retirees the safety and security that they need to navigate these uncharted waters and so uh, I thought it was very fitting for us to put together a deck. Um, this deck that we're about to present today is actually um, a few months old. It's probably about six months old. I, I put it together uh, quite a while ago, but it's really relevant to today and especially relevant to uh, the current events that we're currently experiencing. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into this deck and hope everybody gets some value out of this. Okay. Okay, so my name is Jeremiah Conjure. I'm from Annuity Association. And today's presentation is going to be all about how to build an optimal retirement income plan, reduce risk, and preserve your retirement. And as I previously mentioned, we're in uncharted waters with this current you know, pandemic happening from the coronavirus. There's a lot of uncertainty being had in the economy and the, the markets. Um, and retirees are really the ones that are going to feel the impact for a long time to come because of the fact that they need to rely on safety and security from bonds to allow them to have a, you know, somewhat predictable retirement, but also an income stream off of those, those bonds that are, you know, that's safe. And, uh, you know, with interest rates going to all time lows, and it looks like they're going to stay that way for a long time, there has to be a better alternative. And so this deck is really going to be designed for retirees or pre-retirees that are approaching retirement on how to secure and preserve your retirement in a safe and, and proven way. And, you know, it's about reducing the risk. So um, this is how to build an optimal retirement income plan, reduce risk and preserve your retirement. With new risk, previous generations have never experienced combined with an increasing life expectancy Retirement has never been more challenging than it is today. So 
So here's what you'll learn during this presentation. How to build an optimal retirement plan so you can avoid outliving your savings. Our plans give you permission to actually spend your money in retirement. Learn what the key financial risks of retirement are and how to avoid them. How to overcome the retirement wall of worry so you can be happy in retirement. How to solve your retirement income gap with an income stream you won't outlive. And how to properly structure your retirement so that you can leave a legacy to your loved ones. Here's why this presentation is different. Our entire planning process is conducted on a fiduciary framework to provide optimal solutions based on the best interest of the clients we serve. Our process is based on scientific, mathematic, and economic facts comprised of over 30 plus years of retirement research using data from five different PhD experts. There is no individual situation that's too complex. We work with all age groups, income levels, and occupations and we provide a complete and transparent retirement planning solution for both you and your spouse. Here's why this is important right now. If you wanna learn how most of what you've been taught about investing is dead wrong in retirement, this is for you. Understand the misconceptions of annuities in retirement, including the myths of high fees and long contracts, which are just not true. Wall Street has made people immune to market risk and we are told to ride out the down years. Learn why this is a recipe for failure in retirement. Uh, we're being told every day, I see, you know, tons of advisors and uh, even colleagues of mine that are saying, you know, stay the, stay the course, stay calm, stay the course. That is a recipe for failure for retirees and I'll show you why in this presentation. A reduction in pension plans means more exposure to longevity and market risk in retirement. Learn the best way to solve this. Learn how the retirement landscape has changed and why the 4% rule of withdrawal rate is outdated and inefficient. Now, is this for you? If you're already on this, uh, this presentation and you're wondering, you know, is this for you? If you meet any of these uh, bullet points here, then I would say yes, this is for you. If you're a retiree or pre-retiree and you want to preserve your retirement and actually spend more while worrying less, this is for you. If you have concerns that your money will die before you do, this is for you. If you want to learn why long-term care is one of the most costly expenses of retirement and how to proactively plan for it, then this is for you. If you want to secure your retirement now and avoid these market losses so you can live a happier retirement, this is for you. And if you want to leave a legacy to your loved ones, this is for you. So here's our house rules at Annuity Association. We believe investments should be age appropriate. We believe your investment portfolio should match your risk tolerance and capacity. We believe you should have a written, documented, and guaranteed income plan that you won't outlive in retirement. We are not here to make any promises that we will make you a lot of money. As a matter of fact, we are retirement experts and specialize in the safety and preservation of what you already have, your retirement savings. It is a fact that what got you to retirement will not get you through retirement. We are here to teach you the difference. So the key takeaways, have a plan. So, you know, the biggest part of this is, is having a plan. We always say having a plan is better than not having one. Even if it's not our plan, having a plan will allow you to at least have some direction and where you should go moving forward. Retirement is not a do-it-yourself project. I've gotten recent calls the last couple months from uh, individuals and they've been talking about, you know, using an annuity in their retirement. And when I ask them, are you working with a retirement you know, specialist? Are you working with a retirement advisor? Someone that knows how to navigate retirement risk and take them off the table. And when they tell me that they're not, that they're doing it themselves, I'm, I'm just mind blown. And, uh, you know, I know that there's a lot of resources online and a lot of, um, you know, videos and things that'll teach you what you need to know. But really what you need to know is that working with an expert, someone that's been doing this for a very long time, is going to have a plethora of knowledge that you'll never find on a video or a book. So we always say work with an expert. Retirement should not be a guessing game or a gamble. We should not be you know, taking high risks in retirement and letting it ride in the market and hoping that we make a good return so that we can you know, supplement our income. We need to make sure that our retirement and our nest egg is secure. 
And we believe that retirement plans should have guarantees. And yeah, that, that's a word that usually isn't allowed in fi the financial world, but working with annuities and life insurance a product in the industry that can offer a guarantee on your retirement. And we're going to get into that in more detail here uh, very soon. So define optimal. Optimal, and this is out of the uh, Webster's Dictionary, is the amount or degree of something that is most favorable to some end. We believe an optimal plan means having guarantees on income and principal protection, appropriately balanced portfolios based on your risk tolerance, and it must have, it must have a happy factor. You've worked so hard to get to the point that you're about to retire or you're already retired. You've worked so hard to get there. There's no reason you shouldn't be happy in retirement. So to give you a little bit of an intro on, on us at Annuity Association, I'm Jeremiah Conjur, the Chief Executive Officer here. Uh, my partner is Steve Rosewell. He's our Chief Operations Officer. He has been a retirement planner for over 30 years, and he is a member, managing member of an RRA since 2012. And our story is, uh, to give you a little insight, so Steve and I met um, at another firm that when I first got into the financial services industry, um, I actually started in the life insurance industry. And my job was to go home to home talking to people about taking out life insurance policies to help them preserve their, uh, in this case, it was their mortgage. Um, you know, one of the biggest things is when people buy new homes, if something happens to them, there's, there's a lot of equity inside that home that can get, um, compromised if the bank takes over the remainder of the loan. So uh, our job was to help people uh, solidify mortgage protection plans using life insurance. And I met Steve doing this practice and I, you know, told him, you know, I'm working with these retirees, a lot of my, my clients in that business were anywhere from 55 to 75 years old. Um, a lot of them had just recently retired and they were still taking on this 30 year obligation with a mortgage. And their number one concern was if something happened to them that they would want to preserve the home for their spouse. And, uh, you know, getting to know these folks and helping them take care of that concern, you know, I was being asked often, you know, do you help, do you do retirement planning? Do you, can you help us with our assets? We need help. We don't know what to do. And when I started to really research um, that what we call the retirement crisis, I found that, you know, there's 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day and majority of them do not have a plan for retirement. They're just going into it uh, basically blind. They're going into it, leaving their money in 401ks and these assets and these, these portfolios that are leaving their money exposed to risk. And they're just not sure of what to do. So after getting asked, you know, do I do retirement planning several times? Um, I started to look more into it and I saw that this was my true calling. This is something that I was presented, you know, on this earth to do is to help people, um, you know, protect and preserve their retirement. And so that's when I became a student of retirement planning. And long story short, you know, I, I, I'm here, you know, helping people preserve their retirements today. And I absolutely love what I do. And it's just something that I'm really passionate about. Uh, long story short, after that is we spent thousands of hours uh, researching optimal retirement plan strategies. What is the best way to preserve retirement and provide an optimal retirement plan that includes, you know, a happy factor. And after looking at everything that there is to offer a retirement plan and retirement plan strategies, we found that there's only one true way to create an optimal retirement plan that you won't outlive. And this plan is backed and it's unanimously backed by the top PhDs of retirement research in the United States and the world. So you've got people like Dr. David Babel, Dr. Yari, Dr. Moshe Malevsky, Dr. Robert Merton. Uh, we also researched Dr. Wade Fowle of the American College. These PhDs have been researching retirement for, you know, 40 and 50 plus years. And they've weighed out every single scenario with back testing to see what is the real way is it you know investing in bonds and, and some equities is it 
keeping all your money in cash? Is it putting it in CDs? Is it, you know, using alternative options? What is the best way? And what they found is what you're going to learn in this presentation. So let's talk about the retirement landscape then versus now. So in the past, people like my grandfather, they retired with pensions. They retired with a pension that usually covered most of their basic needs or essentials in retirement. In addition to a pension, they also got a social security check that came in every month. And so between the combination of social security and a pension, they had everything covered. My grandfather was retired by the, I believe he retired around age, I don't even think he was 60 years old. He worked at uh, Winn-Dixie Supermarkets. He was a produce manager. He worked there for over 30 years. And he was one of the fortunate uh, when Dixie employees left that was able to retire with a pension. And I remember, you know, every Sunday we went over to my grandfather's house and had a lunch over there, my whole family. It was something we did every Sunday. And I mean, he lived his life in retirement. He, he loved to watch Tampa Bay Buccaneer football. Uh, he was a big CNN news guy. And uh, I know that he was very happy in retirement because he had a consistent paycheck every month between his pension and social security that covered all his needs. And then he also retired with a small nest egg. So that was something that he actually, when he passed away, he was able to leave to my mom and my two aunts and in addition to his paid off house. So today this picture is flipped upside down. Very few people retire with a pension these days. Only 13% of private sector employees retire with a pension in 2020. We are getting social security and now we're left with a, a, you know, a decent size nest egg, much larger than ever, you know, previous generations before. And we just don't know what to do with it. We love checking that, that statement. We love logging into our 401k account or Fidelity or TD Ameritrade and seeing that large portion of money that's in that account. But you know, the biggest thing that that does is it causes fear. People are scared to lose it. And they don't know how to spend it. They're scared to spend it because, you know, they, they're worried something may happen. And so our planning process completely um, alleviates that concern and gives people direction on the right way to do it to create an optimal income stream in retirement that they won't outlive. So retirement has always been discussed in terms of income, not assets. If you go to the past generations, my grandfather included, it was all about income. You know, he never went and bragged about how much money he had in the bank account, but he was happy to have a pension and, and a social security check every single month in his mailbox. And he went to the store, he, you know, bought his, his needs and he, he got everything that he needed every month. And he never had a worry. He never had a worry. And that's because it was always about income, not assets. And so again, pension, little to none, Social Security, everyone will get that. Even uh, some of the millennials will get some of that. So that's a fortunate thing there. And then nest egg, it's most important on how do we decumulate the nest egg in an efficient and effective manner that avoids risk. It's all about converting assets to income. The number one reason we save for money for retirement is for income. This is the biggest mi misconception in retirement planning. I ask every client I work with, why did, why did you save so much money? What, why do you have so much, so much liquid assets, investable assets? Why do you have so much in this 401k? And you'd be, you wouldn't believe how many people don't answer income. And I understand that it's usually because they, they're thinking about their family, they're thinking about their loved ones. Well, I saved this money from, you know, leave a legacy and that's important. And this plan is going to allow someone to maximize not only their income, but maximize the legacy they're able to leave as well. But the number one reason we save for money for retirement is income. So what's changed? Why has that pyramid or that triangle been flipped upside down? Why are we now at, you know, you know, a huge nest egg that we have to decumulate? Why are we there? So 401ks were introduced in the 1980s, and that's what I call the Wall Street game. That's when it starts. So there, as of 2017, there's $4.8 trillion of assets in 401ks, all exposed to market risk. Today, less than 13% of private sector employees have pensions, and there's been a 30-plus year shift in financial risk 
from employers to individuals. Now, let me say that one more time. There's been a 30 plus year shift in financial risk from employers to individuals. Retirement is no longer a guarantee. You see, when pensions were being offered, they were being offered by the employers. And after they started to see the trend of longevity and market risk impacting these pension plans and that these pensions were going to be on their books for a very long time, employers no longer wanted to take or assume the risk. They didn't want the risk on their balance sheet. So there's some creative you know, planning with a couple experts of Wall Street. They designed the 401k and they got the, the government on board with it. And now you're being tasked with this risk and how to shift this risk and how to you know, really divert from this risk that you're being uh, faced with right now entering retirement or if you're in retirement, you're already facing it and you may not even know what risk you're facing. And that's what we're going to talk about. And then this chart right here is the S&P 500 from 1950 to 2016. And you can see the huge mountain starting around 1996 is when it started to really build up. But you can see the climb started right around the 80s. And then as of 2016, you can see how high we are. And that's to really show you the proof that everything's in 401ks or 403bs or something similar. Uh, you know, some type of investment uh, account for retirement. So that retirement landscape, there's 78 million baby boomers racing headlong and headstrong into retirement. 64% of baby boomers state that running out of money in retirement is their number one fear. Now, the average retirement tenure is currently 18.1 years, but we're really expecting that number to raise pretty drastically because of the improvements in medicine and uh, health and uh, really just longevity as a whole is, is really increasing day by day. The life expectancy averages according to the actuaries of science, currently a male's 86.6 years old and a female's 88.8. .8. Now here's the thing, that's the median, that's the average. There's a portion of people that are gonna live significantly longer than that. We're gonna have the largest number of Sen, uh, I believe it was sanitarians in the world with the baby boomer generation. And now let's look at the market landscape. So the, we've been in the longest bull run in history. We've actually been on 11 years now. This, this deck is a little dated, but still very applicable to what we're going through right now. Uh, we're actually starting to see that turn and we're experiencing history right now, right before our eyes with the market. The market is shifting from the bull to the bear and it's on its way down and you know in my opinion it's it's still got a ways to go down and i think that this is going to be larger than the global uh recession that we went went through back in 2008 and you know the biggest thing is there's so much uncertainty with that we don't know how long it's going to take to rebound i mean the government's making a lot of uh desperate measures to hopefully counteract what's going to happen in the economy. But when you really think about the devastation that's being had, it's unheard of. When have you ever heard of huge airlines being shut down completely for days and days and days? And when have you ever heard of, you know, the NBA canceling their season, the Major League Baseball canceling their season, NCAA canceling their March Madness tournament? When have you ever heard of that? Never, never in the history of my life. And I know my parents' life as well. Uh, this is also sending the Fed to cut down interest rates on bonds and treasury yields to all time lows. Now, this deck here is, is a little dated, like I said, but uh, very applicable to what we're talking about. The S&P 500, the last 30 year average is 8.94%. And that's from 1987 to 2018. Uh, the last 18 year average is only 0.4, uh, 4.37 percent from 2000 to 2018, and then the last one year average from 17 to 18 was 6.59 percent. So, where's the bear? Well, get ready, it's here, guys. Uh, the bear is here, who knows how long it's going to stick around? That's the key question. But I really wanted to read this quote from Craig Israelson from. Brigham Young University, he's a PhD there. 
He says that if you suffer a 35% portfolio loss, you will only have a 61.1% probability of getting back to even over the next five year period. So there's a 40% chance that even in five years that you don't bounce back to where you're at, where you were at before the, the drop. That's concerning for retirees. That's devastating for retirees that are relying on income from these portfolios to live their lifestyle in retirement. So, you know, what do you do? We're going to help you out with that in this presentation. So let's look at the bear market since 1929. Investors lose an average of 39.5%. There's been 13 bear markets since 1929, when one every seven years on average since 1929. And today's retirees potentially face on average two and a half or more bear markets during their retirement. So this isn't, if you're just getting into retirement or looking at retirement now, this is not going to be the only drop that you experience. So how do we allow your nest egg to last through these two and a half or more drops in the market? We're going to show you. Now, the real question is whether the stock market crashes or not, do you really want to have any of your retirement assets, the assets you need and depend on for income for as long as you live and anything that can crash? So what does this mean for you? You're now tasked with turning your retirement nest egg into retirement income and making your income last throughout retirement and hedging new financial risk previous generations never had to plan for. They never had to think about longevity because they had pensions. They never had to think about long term care because they didn't they weren't living that long. Retirement back then was way shorter than it is today. So what are the risks? What are the risks of retirement? We have longevity risk, market risk, sequence of returns risk, long-term care risk, inflation and deflation risk, withdrawal rate risk, and mortality risk. When you retire, there is an event and risk associated that is often overlooked. The impact of this risk can be so severe to the success of your retirement that it cannot be overlooked. And that's called the order or sequence of returns. So here's a, a quick scenario. So meet Jim and John, their best friends, went to college together. Uh, both ended up working at the same uh, factory in the Midwest, and they each retired with $100,000 in retirement savings. They both retired at age 62, and there was a three years age difference between them. Uh, they had a 7% income withdrawal on their retirement plan. And the difference here is that one went broke at age 74, and the other had money for the rest of his life. So everything's the same here, $100,000 retirement, same retirement age, three years different in age. So that three year period is the key here. And they both withdrew the same amount from their retirement nest egg for income. But one went broke. Here's an example of the sequence of returns risk. So you've got two portfolios side by side, portfolio A and portfolio B. This is going to really give you a, a great example of sequence of returns risk and how it works and that no, I won't say no, but most financial advisors or money managers or brokers will never tell you about this risk. They won't tell you. They either don't know about it or they don't want you to know about it because it would require in order for you to hedge the risk, it would require you removing some of your money from their portfolio management to a different investment product. So if you look at uh, portfolio A, you'll see year one, two, three, four, and five. You'll see in the first three years of portfolio A that Jim experienced a market loss in the first three years of his retirement. The market went down 18.39%, 19.14%, and then a negative 4.59%. So you can see the balance. He really started to draw down on that 100,000 after you factor in the 7% he was taking for income. And you can see that he went broke in his 12th year of retirement. In his 12th year, he went from $100,000 to nothing going into his 13th year. If you look at portfolio B, you're going to see that uh, the market returns were, were opposite. So on portfolio A, if you look at the last three years, 19, 20, and 21, you'll see that the in portfolio B, 
those returns are starting in the first three years of portfolio B. So you started with a hundred thousand dollar balance, and then year one, he the John earned a 26.57% return, a 19.61% return, and then a 5.26% return. And you can see the impact that getting started on the right foot in retirement can have to your nest egg. Even though he was withdrawing 7%, the money was still growing. And he didn't experience those market losses till the end of his 20 year, you know, 20 plus year retirement horizon. And you can see that it didn't have a severe impact on the balance. That is sequence of returns risk. We don't know what the market's going to do. No one does. So the question here, looking at that chart and looking at uh, Jim and John's situation is how can you average, you know, if, let's go back to that. Both of the averages, and this is the funny math that Wall Street likes to tell everybody that their return was, the average return. The arithmetic mean or average return, average rate of return was 10.4% on both portfolios. Portfolio A was 10.4%. Portfolio B was 10.4%, both with the same amount of standard deviation and compound growth rate. But one went broke. How does that happen? We're going to tell you. So how can you average 10.4% per year, according to Wall Street's funny math, for 22 years? and only take out 7% and go broke. And it's because of the order of sequence of returns. It's something that we can't control and have no, uh, you know, we can't see the future. We don't know what the market's going to do. And this late, you know, this most recent pandemic that we're going through with the coronavirus is a prime example. Nobody knew this was going to happen. According to Investment News, an article uh, written a few years back, the average rate of return or average withdrawal rate, rather, that will allow someone to withdraw safely to get them through the end of retirement is only 2.8 percent. We are, you know, Wall Street tells us 4 percent. 4 percent does not work. 2.8 percent is the amount if you want to plan over a 30 year retirement horizon. OK, that will give you a 90 percent success rate, 2.8 percent. Most people can't live on that. So there's no crystal ball in retirement planning. As I said, we don't know what the markets are going to do. Nobody knew. I don't care who you are. You could be Warren Buffett. You could be Ray Dalio. None of these guys knew the coronavirus was going to happen and they didn't know the impact that it would happen when it when it arrived. So when are the good years? We don't know. When are the bad years? We don't know. We just don't know, and, and no one does. The market may well may do well over the long haul, you know, 50 plus years when you look at averages. But in reality, we also have decades where they don't do well. And the proof is that we've just had 18 years from 2000 to 2018, where the S&P 500 average return was only 4.37%. Here's a chart showing the secular uh, bull and bear markets from 1900 to 2017. These are cyclical. The bear and bulls come and go, and they last longer than people think. Uh, you know, if you look at the early 1900 to 1920, the bear market lasted 21.7 years, followed by an eight-year bull run, and then a, a, a 2.8-year bear run. Um, another 4.7 year bull and then a 5.3 year bear. And then we had a huge bull going into the forties, you know, during world war two, all the way up to 1965 around. And that was a 24 year run for the bull huge. And then we went to a big bear again, 16.6 .6 years followed by a 17 year bull a 9.2 year bear. And now we're here. We're, we're at the top. We're at the top of this bull market and it's going to, this is the longest bull run in history. This is the longest and, and biggest one in history. So I don't have to say what that means. Uh, I think it's pretty telling looking at this chart. And an example of, of a bull bear market, if you were retired back in 1973 and you withdrew, you know, 4% from your nest egg, you would have went broke around year 14. 
another couple instances where you, you know, if you were planning retirement around these, these times and, 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 and this, you know, these severe economic periods, you would have had a very challenging retirement. The dot-com bubble in 2000 and the global recession financial crisis of 2008. So the question is how much control do you have of market timing when you retire? And how do you eliminate the effects of bad market timing? How do you put a plan together that fights that risk? We are excited to show you how. So the next question is what risk do you think is the number one risk in retirement? I ask people this every day. Um, only about one out of two get it right. And it's longevity risk. We're living longer than ever before. The baby boomer generation will be the longest living generation in history. Now, the problem with longevity risk is it's a multiplier of risks. When you live longer, you're going to be exposed to all the other risks of retirement. And that's what people don't understand about longevity risk. They just think I'm living longer. Yeah, that's true. But when you're living longer, you're going to, you're going to be exposed to all the other financial risks in addition to that. So the key here is that we must take longevity risk off the table. And this is something that stocks, bonds, mutual funds, managed money, and even real estate can do. None of these can do that. None of these can take longevity risk off the table. And the reason for that is because none of them can guarantee your retirement income. The key words guarantee. Yeah, you can produce income off of those investments. You can have you know real estate that generates an income for you, but none of it's guaranteed. That's the key here. So what can? There's only one answer, and it's a lifetime income annuity. Now, before you you know go into thinking bad about annuities, let's stay on this presentation so that we can address those objections and really change you know your perspective when it comes to these types of annuities. The annuities that gave a bad rep for um, the annuity industry as a whole were variable annuities, and we are not talking about variable annuities here. Those pose you to market risk still, and uh, we're not about variable annuities here at Annuity Association. We actually don't even sell them at all. Um, so let's talk about that. So first, let's talk about the retirement wall of worry. So this is what people in what we call the retirement red zone may be experiencing. This is, these are the questions that maybe they may be asking themselves and that may be kind of causing them to lose some sleep at night. So the number one question is, you know, are you going to have enough money to retire? How do you make your nest egg last? You may have concerns about losing money in the market, like the, the dot-com bubble of 0102, the global financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, and the coronavirus today. And you may have concerns about rising long-term care costs. And you want to leave a legacy to your loved ones, but you're unsure how. And then you're asking, well, what are the right investment tools for me in retirement? We're going to show you that. Listen, let me tell you this. It's not about the day you run out of money. It's about all of those years before knowing knowing you're going to run out of money. So going back to the, you know, predicting what the market's going to do, we don't know. What I can tell you today is that what we're experiencing right now is a first. We've never gone through what we're going through today. We've never seen the economy shut down to the level that it is. People's jobs will be lost. People's you know, liquidity, the money that they're able to spend in the marketplace will be lost and businesses will be shuttered and shut down. And I don't know how long it's going to take to recover from that. I hope that these you know, measures the government's taking are going to make a really positive impact. But, you know, the biggest thing is we don't know. No one knows. I don't care who you know in the market, in the economy, they can be, you know, financial advisors, brokers, they can be Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio, you know, who runs one of the largest hedge funds in the world, who, by the way, lost 20% in his flagship hedge fund portfolio. 
to tell you anything. Ray Dalio lost 20% of his client's money because he didn't know this was going to happen. And his plan did not, you know, have enough measures inside it to counteract the impact. And so this is very important. We don't know what's going to happen, but what we do know, the biggest concern is, is not the day you run out of money. It's that time leading up to it, the stress and the unhappiness that's caused and the less fortunate living uh, or lifestyle that you put, expose yourself to because you're afraid of running out. And so this is a chart to show that retirement red zone. And this is very important to determine, you know, the biggest differences between the accumulation, which is your working years. The accumulation phase is your working years. When you're investing, you're taking money, saving it and investing it into a 401k or an IRA or similar account. The accumulation and, and what we call the distribution phase is completely opposite. Market risk has the opposite effect on portfolios during the accumulation phase versus the distribution phase. And the reason for that is I'm sure everyone has heard of the term dollar cost averaging. And so when you're in your working years and you're contributing, you know, five to 10 or 15 percent of your income to investing in the stock market through your 401k or IRA, even when the market drops like it is now, you're buying stocks at a much lower price than they were previously. So in the long run, that's going to have a major positive impact on your portfolio once the market rebounds. But when you're in your distribution phase, you, you don't have that ability. You don't have the ability to reinvest money into the market when it's down to wait, wait and ride it out to it for it to recover because the biggest thing that you don't have in retirement is your employer paycheck. You've also retired that. You no longer have income from your employer to reinvest. And so market risk is greatest in transition between the accumulation and distribution phases. So that 10 year window before retirement and the 10 years after retirement are when you're exposed to the greatest risk of, of market risk. And so if you're in that box, this plan that we're showing you today is for you. And there's an analogy we use here at Annuity Association, and that's investing money and drawing income is like the financial mountain of your life. And there's a picture of Mount Everest here. So we all know who the first person to climb uh, Mount Everest successfully was, and that was Sir Edmund Hillary. And so a question here is what happens when you fall down the mountain? on the way up. And this is an analogy. Let's picture you're in, you're working currently, you're working in your, in your career and the stock market goes down. What happens? Well, if you were hiking up this financial mountain, you would just take a breather. Um, you'd keep saving and investing income. You'd eventually get back up or in this case, break even. So if you're continuing to work, you have time to ride out this market shake down and you can wait for it to recover and you'll break even. And then eventually you'll reach the top and plant your flag and that's retirement. Congratulations, you've arrived. But here's the biggest point is only half of the job is done. You've done a great job saving money. Now, how do we get back down the mountain? You have to get back, back down safely and successfully. But this time, instead of saving money, so again, going back to your working years, you're retired and you're spending money. You're spending money to live the lifestyle that you've built. And so 80% of Mount Everest accidents happen on the way down. But what happens when you fall down in, in, in the mountain of retirement? What happens when you fall down the mountain in retirement? We no longer have the time to take a breather and recover because we've lost our earned income. We've lost our employer paycheck. So enough of the doom and gloom. We don't want you to worry. We want you to retire happy. And the success of your retirement is not determined by your assets. It's not. You could have a stockpile of money and be the most unhappy person in the world. And we, have, we see that a lot. The success of your retirement is determined by how you answer these two simple questions. 
How much guaranteed income do you have? And have you taken the key retirement risk off the table? It's all about how you answer those two questions. And you have to know when to stop playing the Wall Street game. We no longer can rely on the blind trust of Wall Street to determine our success in retirement. The market should not dictate your retirement. And what got you through to retirement or got you to retirement will not get you through it. So we're talking again about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, managed money, and real estate. And the key is knowing when to shift to safety. You have to know the difference between investment tools for accumulation versus risk management tools for preservation. Because when you retire, all the rules change. Average rate of return means nothing in retirement. That 10.4% we talked about with Jim and John's scenario of sequence of return risk, that 10.4% means absolutely nothing in retirement. It's not about the great returns anymore. It's about avoiding the great losses. If you're in the market right now and exposed to this market shakedown and you're losing money every single day right now, this is having an impact on your retirement. How long is it going to take to recover? As we get older, should we be safer with our money? That's a question we ask our clients every day. Why? Why should we be safer as we get older? And the answer is when you retire, there's no more earning capacity. We don't have a salary coming in every every week or every two weeks. Um, that's the biggest difference. So we ask this question to our clients all the time, and it's when you retire, how much money are you willing to lose? And everyone we speak to that's 55 or up, they respond with the answer, none. They're not willing to lose anything. You know what we ask them next is why, are, why is your money all in the market then? So does none really mean none? If you're in the market and you, and you said none and you're in the market, then that doesn't really mean none because you're going to lose it. You're going to lose something. But here at Annuity Association, none really does mean none to us. And unfortunately, that's not what it means to Wall Street. If you answered none, you have a conservative risk tolerance. Having 75% or more of your retirement savings in the market is not conservative. But here's what Wall Street's done is they've taught us that blue chip stocks are conservative stocks. Well, I've got news for you. Blue chip stocks lost over 40% in 2008 during the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, global recession. And today the average retirement portfolio is invested at least 75% in the market between stocks and bonds. And we've been taught that bonds are safe, right? Everybody knows you when you go to retire, you put a portfolio 60% equities, 40% bonds, and you ride retirement out, right? You're safe. That's not true. The bond market just isn't your bond, your father's bond market anymore. This is something that Mitch Goldberg of CNBC.com said on September 19th of 2019. And the headline was, your parents tell you to invest in bonds. They had no idea what was coming. You see, if you look at the history of bonds, you know, they outperformed equities, you know, back in the 80s and even going into the 90s. Um, you could get a very favorable return in the bond market that was safe. But that's no more. Those those rates are gone. Investors in a negative yielding bond like the 10 year German government bond known as a bund are accepting the fact that they will receive less money, an actual negative return for lending money to their government. So if you notice the 10 year Treasury yield just this past week dropped to an all time low um, and it's going to go negative. It will go negative and it's going to be negative here in the very near future. The U.S. 10-year Treasury bond is paying only about 1.5%, and this is, you know, up until this coronavirus. But that's great in comparison to negative yields around the world. You know, Japan's also in a negative interest rate environment, and they have been since 89. Alan Greenspan, former Federal Reserve Chairman, believes that negative interest rates on U.S. Treasury bonds are not a matter of if, but a matter of when. And uh, here's an article written on marketwatch.com. Bonds won't protect you if stocks crash. That was posted in 2016. With yields so low, government bonds themselves pose a huge risk. And that's because 
we're seeing it today. This this article predicted the future. The Fed is having to there's they're resorting to lowering interest rates to zero. They have to. They have to try to bail this economy out. And that impacts retirees and their security that they rely on for safe income. Bonds are not the answer. And the reason is you won't yield enough. You just won't yield enough to live on. So you're either going to have to make a sacrifice in your lifestyle or you're going to have to make an adjustment to how you're investing. Either you're taking on more risk in the equity market or you're going to look into alternatives like what we're talking about today. And that's a lifetime income annuity. Here we go. We're talking about Ray Dalio. He once said the market is a game and only a small percentage of people make real money. We are trained to throw our total faith into doctors and other trained professionals like financial advisors and stockbrokers and do whatever they tell us. The typical money managers or advisors are not going to help you win because they don't have the skills or resources to play in the big game. If they did, you wouldn't have access to them. So what he's saying is the best of the best when it comes to these money managers and advisors, they're working with people with ultra high net worth and that the average American just won't have access to those types of talented individuals that know how to manage money. And that was by Ray Dalio of Bridgewater Associates and manage a $160 billion hedge fund that, like I said, just lost 20% in the market with their flagship portfolio because they could not predict this market crash. The only way to win in the market is to reinvest earned income over long periods of time. Let me read that one more time. The only way to win in the market is to reinvest earned income over long periods of time. What else retires when you retire? Your employment income. So how are you going to reinvest earned income over long periods of time? You're not. Retirement is limited on time. We don't have time on our side once we enter retirement. And as we know, looking at the impact of the coronavirus epidemic here or pandemic, the stock market is based on emotion, not logic. You're seeing these market sell-offs that are, you know, happening for the, you know, the largest impact of market sell-off is happening right before our eyes. And it's because everybody is based on emotion. It's fear. And you'll see the next day the market goes up. That's greed. That's another type of emotion. So this doesn't mean that your investments are not good investments. You know, what you have currently, even if they're losing, it doesn't mean they're not good. They're just not right for you in the period of time you're in. Good investments do good in the good times. Good investments do bad in the bad times. Having investments means having risk. And how much risk is acceptable in retirement? So what's the answer? So as I said in the beginning of our presentation, our planning process is unanimously backed by four of the top PhD retirement researchers in the world. Dr. David Babel, Dr. Yari, Dr. Moshe Molesky, Dr. Robert Merton. And they all say that an optimal retirement is having a guaranteed income plan you won't outlive and a plan that hedges the financial risks of retirement. <clears throat> so step one is creating guaranteed income for life. So there's two key questions when creating guaranteed income for life. What do I need my retirement income to do? And what do I want my retirement income to do? So what do you need your retirement income to do? Our planning process states that you should at minimum have guaranteed retirement income that covers your basic essentials of living in retirement, your basic cost of a living. So food, housing, clothing, cell phone, internet, utilities, insurances, everything that you need to live the lifestyle you want to live or, or can afford to live should be covered by guaranteed lifetime, lifetime income. And it's because we have to replace the paycheck from our employer. When you retire, you retired your paycheck and we have to replace it. You remember how, um, you know, comfortable it was having a consistent paycheck every month or every two weeks in this case to pay your, your living essentials, to pay your mortgage, to pay your gas, to pay your utilities, to pay for your children's, you know, 
care, uh, you know, all that stuff. You know, life was easy when you had a constant paycheck coming in, a consistent, predictable paycheck from your employer. Well, we need to replace it. So the next question is, what do I want my retirement income to do? And so these are things like, you know, your fun, your fun stuff, travel, cruises, golf, dinner, you know, dinner nights, date nights, movies, uh, you know, going and taking trips to Disney World with the grandkids. And that's what we call play check. So your paycheck is replacing your employer paycheck to cover your basic essentials of living and retirement. And then your paycheck is going to be where you have your fun. It's where you travel, you know, take your cruises and all the fun stuff. An optimal retirement plan gives you permission to spend your money. Permission to spend your money. Now, obviously, anybody can spend their money. It's their money. But this is like a you know that this is going to work and, and it gives you direction and guidance for the future. And that gives you real permission to spend your money. Spending money lets you enjoy the retirement you've worked so hard for and deserve. And it allows you to build your dream retirement with a safe and predictable monthly income that you won't outlive and that's not exposed to market volatility. The key thing here, guys, is that income equals security. Income equals security. If your income is in the stock market and it's being pummeled right now, what sense of security do you have? I've talked to so many people the last week that are invested in the market. They're coming to us for help and they can't even think straight. They can't, they don't know what to do. They're not secure. Now the happiest retirees have guaranteed income paychecks. Okay. The happiest retirees have guaranteed income checks. And those are people that have pensions. And as I mentioned, 13% of private sector employees have pensions these days. So unless you work for the government or, you know, uh, municipality or something of that, uh, of that nature, you don't have a pension most likely. And so for most retirees, the hardest thing for them to do is spend their money. And many live what we call a just in case retirement. And it's because they're not good at converting their assets to income or they don't know how to properly convert their assets to income. And they live a just in case retirement. And what that means is rather than going and taking that trip or that, uh, you know, dream vacation that they've always thought about while they were working, they put it off and they put it off just in case, just in case something happens just in case they get sick, just in case the market goes down, you know, just in case their, you know, their, their son, you know, needs a place to live. He's in between jobs, whatever the case may be. They live a just in case retirement. And so the Wall Street way is they tell us, hey, you, you pull 4% off of your investments that are in the market, you can get through retirement. The problem here with that, okay, and this is back tested. This has been back tested by all these PhDs that the 4% rule does not work. There's too many unpredictability, uncertainties of the market that we don't know how to navigate in the future. And the 4% rule doesn't give us the ability to do that. In addition, the risk that we're exposed to, we're still exposed to market volatility. We're still exposed to sequence of returns risk. We're exposed to inflation risk and withdrawal rate risk. And the 4% rule is inefficient. If you spend too much, you'll lead to a shortage in your later years and potentially put your retirement at risk. And if you spend too little, it could mean a lower standard of living than you want. And that means not fulfilling some of your retirement dreams. And then as the lack of flexibility, the 4% rule is not dy dynamic. So it doesn't accurately reflect real life spending habits. As in your working years, your income needs throughout retirement will also change. In your working years, it's the same in retirement. Your income needs throughout retirement will change. And the 4% rule is not guaranteed. It's also outdated. So the 4% rule was invented by William Bengen in the 1990s. Retirement then only lasted 10 to 12 years. Retirement today could potentially last 30 years or more with increased life expectancies and you know the improvement of health care. Retirement is lasting longer than ever. 
And so you need your nest egg to last a lot longer than you did back in the 90s when the 4% rule was created. And it's also outdated because the 60-40 portfolio balance between stocks and bonds, bond yields back then were 5% in the 1990s. We're looking at the 10-year treasury right now, less than 1% and as low as 50 basis points just last week. Bond income is at all time lows today and market volatility is higher than ever. There's a lot of uncertainty. You know, how will the future markets perform? We don't know. How long will we live? You know what? We don't know. Where will future interest rates be? No idea. What will inflation be? That's a great question. What will your actual retirement expenses be? We know what they're at today. We can plan today but we don't know what will happen in the future. The 4% rule for retirement savings desperately, desperately needs to be modernized. And traditional retirement income is based on withdrawing money across all of your investment accounts. And we don't believe in that approach because just a few wild cards can severely impair your retirement income plan. You should never have to sell your investments for income when the market is down. So if you're in the market today and you're retired and you're relying on your portfolio to produce income in retirement, well, guess what? You're either having to not take income right now during this market drop or you're taking income, and which means selling your stocks while they're down at historic lows and you're losing you know, you're losing, you're losing, comp you're compounding your losses when you sell in down markets. And the key thing there is once you sell them at those lows, they never come back to you. Those losses can never be regained because you've taken that money out of the, out of the, out of the playing field. And my quote is, if you can't afford to lose it, you shouldn't even be in the game. And we believe everyone should have a retirement preservation account. A retirement preservation account gives you access to your money in case of emergency with no risk of loss to the market. It includes a guaranteed income for life plan that has no exposure to market risk or economic conditions. And it gives opportunity for safe growth with no risk of loss to the market. And creating optimal retirement is about two things, increasing guaranteed income for the rest of your life and risk management, taking the key financial risk off the table. Time Magazine put an article out a few years back and said securing at least a base level of lifetime income should be every retiree's priority, at least if they want to live happily ever after. Now, I don't know why, I mean, with the SECURE Act that just recently passed, we're finally starting to see... Um, access and retirement accounts through employers that will allow lifetime income to be had. Um, before that, we didn't have the ability, uh, at least very few in, uh, retirement accounts or retirement planning accounts through employers offered access to lifetime income annuities. But, you know, this is not new to any anyone in the world. I mean, Australia offers uh, lifetime income annuities through their retirement plan. All, uh, all parts of Europe offer it. Uh, Japan is now offering it, so it's nothing new. To create an optimal retirement, you must have sources of guaranteed lifetime income. And again, the four PhD experts that we've uh, used their research to help put our planning process together, they're all, they've all unanimous, unanimously decided that, that all of your cost of living should be covered by guaranteed lifetime income. Again, your mortgage, your, your bills, all your bills of living a lifestyle and retirement should be covered. Your insurances, you know, your, your groceries, your gas money, everything. And we call this your live on money. And so what are the sources of guaranteed lifetime income? Well, we've got social security, we've got pensions and fixed annuities. But that's it. There's only three. So what if you don't have a pension? Social Security, what if the Social Security that you do have 
or that you're planning to have if you haven't elected to take it yet is not enough to cover your basic cost of living in retirement. That's where a fixed lifetime income annuity comes in. Income annuities generate more income per dollar of capital invested than any other income generating asset. They're non-correlated with equity and bond markets and perfectly hedge longevity risk. This is a powerful combination of features to address a significant set of challenges. That was a quote from the Financial Research Corporation of Boston. And uh, one of the uh, researchers of retirement and from the Wharton School of Financial uh, Institution Center said, income annuities are the only asset class that effectively address the mortality risk of outliving your nesting. As it generates a permanent stream of income for life, with the mortality risk transferred to the life insurance company providing the annuity. Furthermore, they concluded that funds and mutual funds are subjected to greater risk, typically higher expenses and returns that are, uh, that are unlikely to keep pace with annuity returns when investment risk is taken into account. So what most people have are mutual funds. What most stockbrokers and financial advisors sell are mutual funds. They're exposing your retirement to greater risk, higher expenses, and returns that are unlikely to keep pace with the annuity returns. Once investment risk due to market volatility is taken into account. Tony Robbins, um, philanthropist, author, uh, he wrote a book called Money Master the Game. Incredible book. I, I encourage everybody to read it. It really tells you, you know, how the money machine works in this in this world and uh, you can gather a lot of great info, but he even said the most important step in mastering the game of money is securing guaranteed income for life. The only financial tool on the market that can do that is an annuity. So why a fixed uh, annuity? Why a lifetime income annuity? A guaranteed retirement income plan with a fixed annuity takes the risk and worry out of retirement. And the risks that are hedged with a lifetime income annuity added into your portfolio and, 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 and supplementing Social Security and a pension if you have one is that it hedges longevity risk, market volatility, and sequence of returns risk. So here's the, the grand old question. So how much? How much should I put into an annuity? You know, we're not saying put everything you've got into an annuity. That is not what we're saying, and we would never say that. And anybody telling you that, you need to fire them. You need to go and, and look for a new advisor or, uh, you know, annuity agent. Our philosophy is as little as possible and as much as necessary. So if you take your entire portfolio, we're talking about putting as little as possible and as much as necessary. We're only talking about covering your basic cost of living. That's it. And we call it bridging the gap. You have to bridge your income gap. Your retirement income gap is when you add in all of your cost of living and then you add up all of your guaranteed income uh, streams. So Social Security, pension if you have one, um, and any uh, annuity if you currently have one, and you add them up. And if there's a difference between the income, the I'm sorry, the retirement cost of living and the guaranteed income streams, if there's a gap there, a difference, then you fill that gap with the annuity. And so that'll allow us to determine how much you need to put into an annuity. So when you come to work with us, we'll add in all of your expenses. We'll add them all up. We'll add all of your guaranteed income from social security and pensions and existing annuities. And if there's a difference there, if there's a gap, we'll just figure out how many, how much of our investment dollars do we need to put into the best annuity on the market for lifetime income that'll fill that gap and cover all of our essential living uh, cost of living. Simple formula. So like I said, covering basic living expenses in retirement. I'm not gonna go through this in, entire uh, deck here, or this entire page, but this is a great, basically an example scenario. So we've got a pre-retirement account. That's a combination of IRAs, 401ks, and other savings. Let's say there's a total of a million dollars and that this client has an annual income need in retirement of 90,000. 
Well, if we add in his social security at the bottom there, you see if he gets 24,000 from social security and he's getting a small pension of $12,000 for the rest of his life, then he's got a shortfall. His basic cost of living is 65,000. Okay. He's wanting to get 90,000 to be able to, to live a better lifestyle, but his basic cost of living is 65,000. So what we do is we identify the primary concerns there, which are the shortfalls. So he needs 29,000 to fill one shortfall and then another 25,000 to fill his discretionary expenses, his play checks, his travel, his cruises, you know, his golf games, uh, his taking his wife out to dinner, going and seeing the grandkids. So all we do is use a combination of your guaranteed sources and the $1 million of savings and then we figure out how much we need to put into an annuity to fill that gap. And so guaranteeing a portion of your income, that's what we're talking about. Your, the market should not dictate your retirement. And if you're relying on the market for income, then it, that's exactly what it's doing. It's dictating your retirement. It's telling you what to do not you telling it what to do. We have a saying, if you don't tell your money what to do, it'll tell you what to do. So if you're in, a, in the market right now, that's exactly what you're experiencing. So here's another example of how we fill that uh, shortfall. So in this scenario, it's the same one from the previous slide. We had a million dollars in total savings. And we found that to fill that like that $29,000 shortfall, we would need to reposition money from the savings account or the IRAs or 401k is a combination and roll them into a lifetime income annuity. So in this case, it was $316,000 that we would roll into a lifetime income annuity and that would bridge the income gap and cover in combination with the pension and social security, all of the basic cost of living. Once that happens, once this client makes that decision and puts it into his plan and executes his retirement is no longer dictated by the market. The market can go up and down, up and down all at once. But we know that this guy can sleep better at night because all of his basic cost of living, the cost that he needs to live his lifestyle in retirement is covered with guaranteed sources of income. That's very powerful. Think about that for a second. So why would we do this? Why would we take $300,000 of this guy's money and shift it into a long-term, uh, or excuse me, a lifetime income annuity? Answer simple. Our, our retirement success is determined by taking the key financial risk off the table. And so in doing that and shifting that money to a lifetime income annuity, longevity risk, deflation risk, market risk, withdrawal rate risk, sequence of returns risk and even inflation risk if we build the annuity for in income or inflation adjustment all those risks are hedged this guy can sleep better at night because of that but i thought all annuities have high fees this is the number one objection that we get and again going back to the beginning of this presentation the annuities that gave the annuity word and the annuity industry a bad reputation were variable annuities they're known to have fees anywhere from four to six percent on average. At Annuity Association, we do not offer variable annuities. In fact, we're against them. Um, we actually help people every day get out of variable annuities and shift them into fixed annuities because they're a much better place to be without any fees. And uh, so to answer the question, the lifetime income annuity that we're talking about in this presentation is actually a low fee product and sometimes even a zero fee product and we'll get into that shortly so lifetime income annuities can actually have zero fees it's absolutely zero and annuities that do have fees are variable annuities which i just mentioned and some income riders on income uh, indexed annuities and the thing is here is that you know in order to get the guarantee of lifetime income and the guarantee of principal protection. So any of the money that you move into a fixed indexed annuity or a fixed annuity, the money's protected and shielded from market volatility. You cannot lose anything on your principal. 
And so there is a trade-off. You know, you, you may pay a fee on some of these products, but it's it's very low. It's usually less than 1%. And with that, you get guarantees that no money manager, no financial advisor can give you. They cannot guarantee if your money's in the market that you won't lose. They also can't give you a guarantee that you're going to gain anything. And a lifetime income annuity is the only investment vehicle in the market that actually comes with guarantees. And so, in my opinion, I think that 1% fee is well worth it. Uh, I mean, you factor in the fees that financial advisors and <clears throat> money managers and brokers charge these days, upwards of 1% and as high as 2 2.5% on your money, whether you make money or not, every time they trade. So right now, these brokers are making a, a killing. They're selling stocks. They're getting calls. The, the phone's ringing off the hook. They're shutting Wall Street down, hitting the breaker because they can't take enough orders. They can't handle the capacity of phone calls and orders that are coming in. And these brokers charge commissions and they charge management fees. So they're making money whether you do or not. An annuity, they're, they're not doing that. They're going to make less than 1% if there is an annuity uh, fee for the lifetime income rider. And that's it. The fixed annuities are very similar to CDs. So a lot of people right now are talking about shifting to, to CDs or shifting to safety in the form of a CD. Well, <clears throat> let's talk about that. You know, fixed annuities work very similar, but they offer some, some additional benefits. So a CD or certificate of deposit of the bank is fixed with no volatility, same as a fixed annuity. They're both safe, no market volatility or risk. And the CDs FDIC insured up to 250000 and with fixed annuities through the uh, state guarantee insurance associations per state, they're guaranteed up to $300,000. Both have a time deposit requirement. So with a CD, the higher return will mean that you have to, uh, you know, put the money in there and not take it out for a longer period of time. Same thing with an annuity. Um, the term on a CD is usually six months to five or more years. And then a fixed annuity can be anywhere from one year to 15 years based on your needs and your planning horizon. If the term is not met, both are going to charge an early withdrawal penalty. But the cool thing about a fixed annuity is that it's prorated. So the longer you're in the contract and you decide to end your, your end of the contract and exit the agreement, the, the fees prorated actually goes down the longer you're in it, which is, most CDs don't do that. And in a certificate of, of deposit, you have no access to, to your money. You have no liquidity. Whereas in a fixed annuity, you're going to have, in most contracts, access up to 10% of your year, your money per year. So in reality, after the first year, if you want to take out 10% every year for 10 years, you would have, in theory, taking out 100% of your money by doing 10% per year. Annuities have much higher earning potential and payouts. The national average on uh, interest for a certificate of deposits is about one and a quarter percent, and a fixed annuity is anywhere from four to seven percent or more. And the key here is that an annuity is going to offer guaranteed lifetime income, which, if you add that to your retirement plan, it's going to give you a license, aka permission to spend your money and enjoy retirement. If you know that your income coming in is guaranteed every month and it's going to cover all of your basic essentials of living in retirement, think about the freedom, think about the peace of mind that that will give you in retirement. You actually can go spend your money because you know you're, it's in your budget. You, as long as you don't overspend, you're great. And you're gonna truly enjoy retirement and be less stressed. The other cool thing about having a guaranteed lifetime income plan is that it's going to aggressively grow, allow you to aggressively grow the rest of your assets. So as previously mentioned, we were talking about only putting a portion of your savings into a lifetime income annuity to supplement Social Security and pensions. But you still have other monies in the market if you wish to. And as long as those portfolios are tailored to your risk tolerance, if you choose, you can actually grow them more aggressively than ever before because you're no longer dependent on that money for income. Talk about really being able to take advantage of these market downturns. If you're no longer dependent on it for, for income, 
you can grow your legacy by investing more aggressively in the market uh, with the remaining assets that are there. And again, you know, it gives you a bigger opportunity to leave a legacy. Having a guaranteed lifetime income plan that covers your basic cost of living in retirement also helps you avoid the psychonomics of retirement. The psychonomics are what are we thinking about on a day to day basis during these market volatility periods? What are we thinking about when, you know, we come down with the flu or some type of health scare that uh, may cost us money? Like, what are we thinking about there? We're, we're thinking about fear. We're, we're going through stress and worry. But if you have a guaranteed lifetime income paycheck that's there every month, to cover your basic cost of living and it covers all of your things like, you know, your house, your car, trips and shopping. That is the key is to be able to have the freedom to do those things. And that leads me to an important question. You know, if you haven't retired yet, this is for you. When's the last time you rated your 401k? Many people answer never. Well, the spending, spending money is the key to a happy retirement. And we don't want you to be this guy. You know, this guy here, he's sitting on a ton of assets. He's got a pile of money. But if you look at the expression on his face, he's concerned. He's not happy. He's worried. He doesn't know how to spend that money. And he wants to leave some money for his family, but he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. He's living a just-in-case retirement. So let's check out the annuity payout rates. So this is just an example. Um, this was pulled from uh, some of our data. These aren't guaranteed. If you came to us today to buy an annuity, it couldn't guarantee these rates. But this is some rates that we've historically had and uh, that we've offered to clients. And this is what we call risk-free rates. So if you have uh, age 65, 75, and 85, this is the average payout rate or what we call a distribution rate. This is not necessarily a credited interest rate. This is what we call a distribution rate. And this is what counts when looking at lifetime income annuities is who's going to offer me the highest percentage of distribution payout. And so these are some examples. The right hand side was a life uh, with guarantee, which means if you had a spouse that you're wanting to cover as well. So two lives, basically, that's what the difference is there. Uh, for two lives versus one in this scenario. Now, let's break down an annuity, a lifetime income annuity. How does it work? Well, there's a portion that uh, is your principal. There's a portion that's interest. So those two things, any investment vehicle can offer. Uh, you know, mutual funds, uh, stocks, bonds, whatever. They all have principal. They all have interest. But the secret sauce. The secret sauce that a lifetime income annuity offers, no other company, no other product, no other industry can offer. It's something that's only available from a life insurance company. Stocks can't offer this. Bonds and real estate cannot offer this. And that secret sauce is called longevity credits. So what are they? What are longevity credits? So here's a scenario. We've got four elderly women that meet every Wednesday for bingo and they enjoy their time together and they've got a decent amount of money in the bank, but they like to gamble. They like to play bingo. Um, they're happy when they're, you know, hedging some, some bets there. And uh, so they decide, they talk to each other and they said, Hey, let's, let's all put some money in a jar. And when one of us passes away, we all get to collect the money that's in the jar. And so there's that jar and they all love that idea and they put a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks each. So it'd be $500 in the jar. Well, the following year, Barbara, the one in the middle there passes away. So what happens? The remaining four elderly women, they all get to take a, a game. They all get to take that $500 and distribute it amongst the four of them. So they each get $125, a 25% rate of return. And so they said, you know what, let's do this again. Let's let it ride. That was fun. Let's see if we can do this again. So they all put their money back in the jar. And Ellis passes away. Good old Ellis there on the corner passes away. And they all get to collect the three remaining survivors, $167 each. 
a 67% rate of return on their money. So what happens to my money when I die? If an annuity is structured properly, it will pay out to your spouse or your children. All lifetime income annuities pay longevity credits. So that scenario that we just showed you with the elderly women, that's how an annuity is able to offer the lifetime income payouts that they offer because they're, they're pulling a bunch of people together and they understand that some people are going to die unexpectedly or prematurely. And that money that's remaining, if, if it was set up that way, will go back into the pool. And that's what they redistribute to the current existing pool. So here's the components of a lifetime income. So you've got the gray area, uh, which was the principal. You've got your interest in orange. And then you see the longevity credits really start to pick up there, especially towards the end of the uh, life cycle. And this is what equals the happy factor. Longevity credits equal happiness. When you retire, do you want to be happy or unhappy? The Wall Street Journal said the secret to a happy retirement is friends, neighbors, and a fixed annuity. And uh, there was an article written by Towers Watson in 2012 that showed the, um, you know, annuities and retirement happiness, what those key findings were. And, and that was retirement satisfaction has, has steadily declined over the last decade. Satisfaction is highest amongst those with high levels of wealth and income who are very healthy and annuitize their income. Among retirees with similar wealth and health characteristics, those with annuitized incomes are the happiest. And annuities provide the biggest satisfaction boost to retirees with less wealth and those in poor health. Do you know who the happiest retirees are? I do. They're your policemen, your firefighters, your judges, your teachers, anyone that works for the government or municipality. Um, they're people that have pensions. And they're the happiest people in retirement. I have uh, two doors down. My neighbor, Tim, he was a retired firefighter. The guy across the street, uh, my neighbor, John, he's a retired police officer. And uh, these guys are in their, I, I don't even think they're in their 60s yet. I think they're mid-50s. And they retired with pensions. And Tim just bought a new boat, uh, likes to fish. John, you know, with his pension. He's able to cover all his basic needs in retirement. And he's got a new business that he started and uh, he's able to, you know, grow that business. And whether it does well or not, he's not dependent on it. He's just doing it as a hobby. And that's a beautiful thing. So it's all about pensions. So what's a pension? It's a type of retirement plan where an employee adds money into a fund that includes contributions by the employer, the workers' pension payments are determined by the length of the employee's working years and the annual income they earn on the job leading up to retirement. A pension's guaranteed income for life. And you know what else? Lifetime income annuities equal pension-like income streams. So we have a term that we use here at Annuity Association, and it's called pensionizing a portion of your nest egg to create lifetime income or a pension-like income stream. Lifetime income streams are the key to happiness article written in 2012 by Time magazine. And this was actually a study conducted on London. And, you know, like I said, they, they offer income annuities in their retirement plans through their employers. And that is really what's creating more happiness for those people in, in London. Inc. You know who the most unhappiest retirees are? They're, they're the, there's that guy again. They're people with a pile of money and they're miserable. And, uh, you know, it goes back to if you can't afford to lose it, then what are you doing in the game? If you doubled your pile of money, here's a, a great question. We're all creatures of habit. We all, you know, have built the lifestyle we've built. And, you know, we've done that majority of the reason for that is because we are who we are. And, you know, we, we have certain principles and values that we live by. And so the question here is, if you doubled your pile of money, would it completely change your lifestyle? Most people answer no to that. Like, if you think about it, yeah, it'd be great to double your money. But are you going to really drastically change the way you live life today? Are you going to really live that much of a higher means because you doubled your money? Most likely not. You're who you are. You're living the lifestyle you live because that's what is programmed in you. It's in your DNA. So let me ask you this. If you lost half of your money, how would that make you feel? 
would it change your lifestyle in retirement? So if you lost half of what you have now, would that change your lifestyle in retirement? For most, it's yes. And so if doubling your money wouldn't change your retirement lifestyle, but losing your money would, what are you doing in the market still trying to double your money? So we'll talk more about studies of people that actually live longer when they have a lifetime income annuity. So here we got uh, Jill and John on the left-hand side. They both bought lifetime income annuities, and they got Mary and Bob that, that did it. Jill and John live longer lives. Studies show that. And a lifetime income annuity, it's supposed to enhance your life, your life expectancy by 20%. We've got a book that we found by Jane Austen that was written in 1811 that was talked, that talks about lifetime income annuities. And a quote out of there said, if you observe, people always live forever when there is a lifetime income annuity to be paid to them. An annuity is very serious business. It comes over and over every year and there's no getting rid of it. That was a book called Sense and Sensibility. So when, when should you make this, this decision? When should you really start to look at this lifetime income annuity as part of your portfolio? We recommend if you're within 10 years of retirement, that's the ideal period. But maybe you've recently retired and you're within 10 years of just recently retiring. The best time's now. There's never a, a bad time. So that's going to end it for our, our presentation today. Um, part of this deck also goes into maximizing Social Security. Um, we also talk about how to hedge long-term care risk. And we'll be presenting those, the remainder of this deck, uh, later on this week. So stay tuned to our channel here at Annuity Association. If you've gotten some value out of this and you want to speak to an advisor on our team or speak to me personally, you can call our 1-800 number at 1-855-866-3659, 855-866-3659, and I'd be more than happy to set up a consultation with you. We are working remotely at this time since, uh, you know, we are practicing self-distancing. So if you, you know, are looking into this, this is something that piqued your interest and you want to find out more information, we are working remotely by phone and by virtual meeting. So if you have a computer or a mobile phone, we can also set up a virtual chat. I will actually speak with you personally to see how we can help. But um, if you found value in this video, please share it with a friend, like our page, um, share it with someone that you know that's dealing with this, this pandemic and it's affecting their, their spirits and affecting their happiness. And you know there might be a possibility that we can help them. So appreciate everybody tuning in today. We hope that this has added some value to your retirement planning process. And we hope that we've added some happiness that there is some light at the end of the tunnel and we can help you navigate these uncharted waters. We look forward to serving you in retirement. We'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day.